Hello everyone and welcome to another Guild Wars 2 build video. We're going back into the arena, back into some PvP, and today it's going to be about the Berserker. I actually haven't touched Warrior since the balance patch, but I had a request from a patron to do this video. So, uh, of course, with the patron perk of, um, I think it's like $5 or more, I don't even know my, my own patron tier perks, um, you can recommend a video. So this individual has recommended a Berserker video, and I'm going to follow through on it. And of course, going to showcase the build I'm running. It might not be meta, it might not be hell even good, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. I've taken it in a couple of games and play tested, play tested it as much as I could. And I'm having a lot of fun and it's effective in areas. Of course, they have their weaknesses as mostly all. I just stopped recording there for a second. Wow. <laughs> as most all builds do. Um, so let's jump right in to the build and the specializations all i can say is thank god that i <laughs> caught that i would have just stopped recording and kept going okay great so first and foremost we have the amulet i'm using paladin amulet and i'm using rune of the fighter toughness and power you know extra vitality making sure that i'm alive I'm taking sigil of cleansing sigil of revocation sigil of battle and sigil of intelligentsia next we're going over to the specializations um and I'm running Defense, Strength, and Berserker, because Berserker got a little bit of love in PvP and World vs. World. So for Defense, I'm running Dodged Marched, uh, reduce the duration of movement, impeding conditions, and you'll gain some regeneration um, on a 10 second cooldown. I'm taking Sundering Mace, your stuns, dazes, knockdowns, applied by Mace skills last longer, and also Mace skills gain reduced recharge. Wonderful. I would actually kind of like to see like there be a baseline function for this trait where it's like, all stuns and like CC effects last like 3% longer, but then when you wield a mace, it's 20% longer. I don't know. Could be a thing. 3% might not be even worth it, but finally, I'm taking Rousing Resilience. Gain toughness and health when you break out of a stun. Pretty same old, same old. And then over to Strength. This is where I'm putting a, uh, a lot of my power, mostly. Uh, I'm taking restorative strength. I'm actually haven't I haven't played with brave stride yet, um, but it could be interesting if you use a lot of movement skills. I am taking forceful greatsword while not actually using greatsword. Um, I'm mostly just doing this for the power gain and the chance to gain more might. Um, the other two body blow because we are doing a lot of CC effects. This could be worth it, though you only get three seconds of weakness, and I'm not necessarily a condition build, so I don't have a lot of use for the bleeding. So, you know, you could you could kind of mix whatever you want. If you want more vitality, go for it. But right now I'm using Forceful Greatsword. And then finally I'm taking Berserker's Power. And then for Berserker, I've actually gone over to Savage Instinct because it is the two second buff to the 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 skill you won't have any damage on you for two seconds um i don't think this applies condition i don't think this trait affects condition damage so you might be taking condition damage as well but um i still wanted to do this because it's also a stun break next i'm taking a blood reaction a percentage of precision is given as bonus ferocity this bonus is doubled while in berserk so you're gonna your crits are going to be doing much more damage and then finally, Bloody Roar. Deal increased damage while in Berserk mode. Nice, fun, love it. It's cool, you know. We're doing 15% more damage. It, it's it's nice. We're not taking King of Fires because I'm not a condition build. You could take Eternal Champion. You gain toughness while in Berserk mode, and then you also gain stability and might when breaking stuns. If you want to do this stun-breaking build, you can get, of course, the bonuses of Rousing Resilience. And also Eternal Champion, so more Might and um, Stability. Also, you gain a little bit more Toughness. So this is probably more of a PvP-focused trait. Um, if you're a little bit new and you are just being slightly extra precautious. But if you want to go straight up damage, take Bloody Roar. 
Next, I'm taking dual wield maces. Um, counter blow got a little bit of a buff. Crushing blow is interesting. Now you'll gain uh, extra might and some vulnerability, of course. Um, tremor is a nice skill. And I'm mostly using axe shield. Shield is the staple in PvP. It's a great defensive tool and it has a nice stun. Um, you have two charges on throw axe and also the berserk decapitate for the axe. Um, F1 skill got a power buff in PvP and World vs. World. So that's why I'm kind of running with axe right now. I'm using Blood Reckoning. I'm trust I'm testing it out, you know. I'm seeing how it is because it does now convert 33% damage to healing instead of 25. So it got a little bit of a buff. Uh, and it does gain adrenaline and it's on a 25 second cooldown. So it's pretty low. However, I would also recommend taking Mending um, or maybe Healing Signet. Mending is great because this build does have some issue cleansing conditions. So, you know, I would say Blood Reckoning or Mending. To answer the issue of condition cleansing, I am taking Signet of Stamina. The passive is great, you'll gain faster endurance regeneration, but the active is the most useful in situations when you're fighting against, say, Necromancers, Mesmers, or like Condi Weavers or Condi Tempests. Uh, you'll remove all your conditions and you'll gain some endurance. It's pretty nice. And then for extra abilities, extra utility skills, I'm taking Wild Blow for the CC and also the application of Fury. Um, and also extending the duration of Berserk mode, of course, you know, increased by four seconds. Oh no, my mouse died. There we go. I got to shake a little bit. I'm taking Outrage because it's, it's, I feel like Outrage is pretty much a bread and butter skill with Berserker. You break out of a stun and you'll extend Berserk mode if you're in it. Um, this pairs very well with Headbutt. I feel like if you take Headbutt, you kind of have to take Outrage or some other stun break skill. But um, Outrage, 20 second cooldown, real easy, real simple. Stun break on a 20 second cooldown. I couldn't ask for anything better. And of course, Headbutt does break your stun, but you will stun yourself if you don't. If you hit someone, you'll stun yourself. So just be, just be wary of that. Keep that in mind. So that is the build, guys. We've covered everything. And um, my mouse died again. But let's go over to the gameplay. And I'll show some gameplay of this and kind of talk a little bit about it. So to the gameplay. Welcome, welcome to this gameplay section. I'm actually going to be showing you the very first game that I did with this build. So hopefully for anybody trying to pick this up or just wanting to see something and be like showcasing how easy I kind of adapted to this build. Just got to make sure that you remember where your skills are and on which buttons. Um, so here, very first fight, I didn't know exactly how to approach this because it was a lot of AoE stuff, but I decided to pop my heal skill um, a little bit before I get to have health. I feel like with Blood Reckoning, it's okay to pop it a little bit early to the point where you're not in an emergency condition like you're not critical um because it is a skill that is dependent on how much damage you do so here we get a couple of stomps nice quick little team fight i think it was like a 3v2 so i think we did already have the numbers but we managed to get them down pretty quickly um and then speaking of team fighting this build is predominantly more of a team fighter you can solo a couple people but for the most part you do a lot of damage when the focus isn't always on you um, I'll cut away from this fight because it's just spawnier, and I ended up did going down because I did get um, ganked by, um, I think, the Mesmer and a Thief, and it was just a bit too much for me, too much condition damage. I was going to go help the Guardian uh, with this fight, but I was like, you know what? No, he's fine. It's probably better for me to go to point. I end up CCing her, and this is actually a really good combo. I already use headbutt, but I know I have a shield, so I throw my third, I go into a fourth, I, I activate my berserker first, I activate berserker, go four, use my axe second skill, and then I use decapitate, and it just takes him out. So even if you don't have headbutt, you can go into your shield and still get a stun. Here I destroy um, his Aegis, um, I cripple him again. The axe third skill is actually really nice. Um, he does CC me here. I decided not to use a stun break because I didn't think it was necessarily worth it. 
um, practicing restraint. He ends up going to home, so I might as well ping home, because I know there's a guardian there, so I was like, maybe he'll turn back. But um, I wanted to finish this fight here. Um, I, not, I wild blow him off, and wild blow is actually a really fun skill to do that, to control the battlefield more. Um, I move into my mace to get some more interrupts and stuns. I miss the second, but I do end up getting a fifth, and then I swing my fourth, and then I, uh, I use my um, F1. Is it Primal Bash with the mace? I forgot what it is. I dodge out of the chill, because I don't want chill. Interrupt her, and, you know, we kind of just finish her off there. This build is similar to the other build that I did with the Spellbreaker. However, this build isn't always focused on CCing other people and stunning them and interrupting them. You have the capability of doing so to help survive um, and also help other people survive. But for the most part, I tend to stick with Axe because it is very damage focused. Um, here, we're just try trying to transition. Um, but yeah, touching on Wild Blow, I actually really enjoy Wild Blow. It's a, it's a fun skill to help control. Um, and I didn't want to get the res on this person. So I already go straight into my Berserk mode. I do get feared, and um, I'm just trying to keep as much damage on this Necromancer so that my teammate could also get revived. Um, thankfully, they got revived just in time. The thief did go stealth and was about to. Um, I hit a 5, I, a nice interrupt, he gets pulled by my team, he's very much outnumbered, but he does end up slipping away, because thieves are very flighty. <laughs> thieves do what thieves do best, run, um, but go for him. And um, yeah, now we're just going to show a little bit of a, kind of a 1v1, just trying to sustain a fight against a guardian, he's not a very bursty player, and you have a, nice, uh, a nicer time playing against foes, who aren't burst focused um say like a thief or like a an elementalist but all in all guys this was the build i hope you guys enjoyed like the video if you like to comment down below your thoughts subscribe for more videos if you would like to go help support me on patreon um and become a patron you can uh request your own videos uh so on and so forth um or if you just want to send me a quick tip on paypal that'd be wonderful as well um but i'm also streaming on twitch fridays i'm doing giveaways on fridays and um streaming on the weekends as well so all my links are down below my little plug session but um yeah thanks guys and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye everyone stay safe Mwah.